Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first video of mine. I have been feeling really inspired recently by watching people's What I'm Planning to Pan in 2023 videos. So I thought I would kind of do my own version of that, which is some products that I'm specifically planning to plan, but also going through my inventory and setting my makeup inventory. It would be far too long a video to do makeup, skincare, hair care, and perfume all in one video. So my makeup inventory, because that's the most fun product to talk about for panning and using and everything anyway. I thought we would go through that, look at where I am just now, which is December 2022. So I am well aware that that might not fully reflect when I'm starting 2023 from, but it's in the ballpark. So I thought we could go through category by category and I could kind of talk to you guys about what my goals are for those categories by the end of 2023 if I do have specific products that I'm planning to pan, why those products as opposed to other ones. So I hope it will be interesting to some of you and let's get on into it. In terms of where I'm kind of starting from, this year is in this past year, 2022, has been all about panning for me. I've done so many project pans. I did my 13 by Halloween project pan, my 12 pans of Christmas project pan is currently still ongoing, and I did my 2022 project pan, which I've just filmed the finale of. If you like project pan content, I'll maybe put all my 2022 project pans into a playlist and link them up in the eye if you want to go check them out. But my overall goal this year was that I wanted to use up 300 products. So in past years, I've said like reverse rouge is my goal and it's been about value. This year it was majorly about the quantity and about finishing stuff. So I feel like for 2023, I am still going to set a usage goal, but I think after doing the quantity goal this year, I'm going to go back to the reverse rouge values based usage goal and it'll be more about using up some of my more expensive products and trying to get the money out of them before they go bad or whatever. And I feel like a lot of that will come more from skincare, hair care, etc. My big thing for makeup in 2023 is going to be rotating through and um, you know setting up monthly makeup baskets doing like one palette one week that kind of thing because I was doing my makeup yesterday I used one of my by Terry ombre black stars and I took it took the lid off and the product had broken it had kind of dried up it's gone a bit crumbly and it had broken it's a stick eyeshadow and it had broken within the stick and I don't know how long that's been sitting there broken for it wasn't broken the last time I used it but the last time I used it was probably Christmas last year. So I feel like because I have been concentrating on panning stuff this year, next year needs to be more about rotating because I feel like there must be other things in my collection that are sitting going off. So next year my emphasis on makeup is definitely more about rotating than finishing and panning, but I still do have some panning goals. So let's get into them. Starting with face primers, right now I have got 11 face primers. My oldest one is my Smashbox Primer Water. Now. I'm not too bothered about trying to get rid of that because I don't actually use that very much as a primer. What I tend to use that for is wetting eyeshadow if I want an eyeshadow to be like super sparkly. So I'm not bothered about trying to knock that one out, although it's the oldest within my collection. The next three oldest ones after that then are the Lancome LA Base Pro Pore Razor, which I really like and I didn't open until very recently. So although it's been sitting for ages, it's not been open for very long. Then the Kevin Kwan Sensual Skin Enhancer Primer, which again, I really like, but I feel like I haven't been using that over the past few years, so I don't even know if it's good or not. I'll actually need to dig it out, just make sure that it's still working, and it is probably one that I will prioritise. But the third one is my Chanel Le Blanc de Chanel, which again, I bought in 2016. So those, the Smashbox ones from 2015, and the other three are from 2016. Now I have been on a beauty no buy to some degree since 2018 forward or a low buy in 2021 so most of my stuff is very old. What I would quite like and it's probably not going to happen within the year next year but by 2024 I've been trying and I'm doing it from memory so some of these may not be exact um, and you'll see this because I'll, I'll put screenshots of these up um, as I'm talking about them. It is from memory but I'm trying to put in the year that I acquired things. So what I'd quite like is in a dream world by the end of 2023 to have nothing in my inventory that has a 2000 and something teen starting in it. I would like everything that I want to be something that I've acquired in the 2020s because time is passing so fast and I think Covid has really affected this as well. But yeah I feel like I still think about things that I bought in 2018, 19 as reasonably new when actually that's like four or five years ago now. 
um, you know, and by the end of 2023, it will be yet another year on from that. So it's probably not going to be achievable by the end of the year next year, but maybe by 2024. That would be my like big goal is to knock out everything that isn't a 2020 acquired product. But yeah, so those are my oldest ones. Other than actually, I'm saying this, I've got one that I think is from approximately 2010, which is this one here, this Estee Lauder Spotlight. Now this was in one of my project pans last year and there is so little of this left. Now I wouldn't put this in my face, but what I was doing with this was putting it on my legs if I was going out um, because it's a sort of illuminating, sort of light reflecting one. There's so little left that I feel like I just want the credit of using it rather than decluttering it. Kind of hoping that actually I might finish this this year. You know, if I'm going out on Christmas nights out and stuff, I'm going to try and remember to use this. Definitely would like this out by next year, but hoping that I won't even be technically taking this into 2023. Fingers crossed. But in terms of what I am taking into 2023, the Chanel Le Blanc de Chanel. Um, this is the one specific product that I am planning to pan from my primers. So I don't know if you guys can see, I've kind of just shaken it up, but it's, it's about here in terms of what is available. I kind of did that thing where this felt really special when I first bought it and I didn't get a lot of use out of it. I was trying to like keep it good or whatever, um, but I did use it. I've used it recently because I was thinking about doing this video and thinking about my project pan for next year. And it does seem to be like it's still performing all right and whatever, but obviously this was very expensive when I bought it and I would like to just get it used up before it goes off. So that is the specific primer that I'm planning to pan next year. Also in terms of primers, I've got this little Mac Mini and I would like to get that knocked out. Ideally, I would like to get that knocked out this year as well, but I'm working on a Laura Mercier Mini at the moment. So I don't know if I'll get around to this one, but I would like this one knocked out ASAP as well. So in terms of where I am right now, I've got 11 primers, but I am working on my Laura Mercier Hydrating Primer Mini and my Guerlain Primer Mini is in my 12 Pans of Christmas. So I'm expecting both of them to be knocked out for definite, which would take me down to nine that I'm actually taking into next year, depending on whether I finish this or not. So it'll either be eight or nine. Nine if this is still here. And then if I could then finish the MAC one and the Chanel one, that would take me down to seven. Ideally, I'd really like to only have five primers by the end of next year, but I don't know if finishing another full size two primers is realistic or not but I'd like to get most of my base categories down to five or less in each of them so that would be the the dream goal by the end of 2023 would be to have five or less but if I have knocked it from 11 to 7 by the end of 2023 I'll be happy with that. Then on to foundations now I have 16 right now but I've got five minis in there I've got a Dior mini, two Essie Loader minis and two Guerlain minis like samples basically. I'm hoping to knock all five of them out before the end of this year so actually hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be going into 2023 with 11. Again I, I think five would be more than adequate in terms of foundation but having worked on my NARS one in my 2022 project pan if you've been watching that you will know like we all know they're not all equal. Now that NARS one's a particularly watery runny formula so I did not, I worked on that all year and didn't finish it. So that has given me a bit of perspective on how easily I can maybe be assuming that these will be to finish. But I definitely want to finish this from Armani. This is their Crema Nuda. This is just such a big cumbersome product. That's really why I would like it out. I can't store this in with my other foundations. It doesn't fit in a drawer or anything like that. I feel like it just sits on top. I kind of forget about it. I don't know if this will ever be in a project pan because I don't think it'd be that interesting to watch because that's not product that you're seeing, that's like a sort of pearlescent design on the jar. Um, but there's not actually that much left because I've had it for about 100 years. 2016 I got this according to my inventory. I would definitely like to get this one knocked out. It's worth $120. It is far and away the most expensive of the foundations on my inventory. So that would fit with a values based usage goal for next year. And I just definitely, I want to use this because it was so expensive before it goes off. But I do just forget about it. I think I probably just need to take it into work, make it my work foundation because it could sit in my desk and I would see it if it was sitting in my desk in a way that I, my eyes just seem to glance over it when it's sitting on top of my like drawers that my other foundations are in. I just automatically go into the little drawer. So 
this one I definitely need to concentrate on next year and I would like to knock that one out and it does have I've used it I've had it for so long I've used quite a lot of it so it's not like it's a new foundation or anything like that so I'm hoping I could also knock out another one through usage but having learnt my lesson with the NARS one and knowing that the super thin watery formulas obviously take longer to use. Looking then at my oldest ones, the NARS one which I've spent most of this year working on so I'm not putting that into to next year. I need a break from that foundation. My MAC waterproof foundation is actually the oldest one that is from 2015. I bought that when I was in Florida in 2015 but again it's a very very thin formula so I feel like it wouldn't be that satisfying to watch in a project pan it would be very very small increments that it would move down in so then going into my 2016 purchase foundations the Armani one that I just showed you that's from 2016 Kevin O'Quan essential skin enhancer if you know that product it's quite a thick sort of balm and you it's sort of like a pro product that in theory you would maybe mix it up with things um, so I do use that, it's, it's, I kind of use it almost more as a concealer than a foundation. I do really like it but a little goes such a long way I feel like I would never finish that in a million years. So that leaves me with the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Foundation which I purchased in 2016. I like this foundation, I prefer the non-matte version. Even though I've got oily skin so this one technically suits me better, I, just, I like the finish of the other one better. So I always lean towards just the standard L'Oreal Infallible um, you know the liquid one but this one's then definitely the next oldest formula and it is kind of not super thick but like reasonably thick that I think if I put this into a project pan you would actually see sort of satisfying jumps each month so I think this will be the other foundation that I aim to finish within the year. I have 16 just now as I said five minis so take them out of it that takes me down to 11. If I'd knocked out another two that would take me down to nine. I feel like at this point none of those other foundations are untouched like it's not like I've got another nine full foundations so I feel like maybe by the end of 2024 I could knock another four out and be down to that five number which is where I'd like to be and obviously if things have turned or gone off or whatever there might be a bit of decluttering there as well. Corrector, I've got one corrector, it's my beauty pie under eye corrector. Perfectly happy having one under eye corrector. If I finished it I would repurchase it. I just don't want it to go above one so I'd like that to stay at one. Concealer, right now I am showing seven on my inventory. I have just finished one in my 2022 project pan finale so we'll take that down to six. I've just not taken Obviously I'll do my empties at the end of December so it's it's still showing at the moment. So take that down to six straight away. Then I have got my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I've actually I've taken the stopper out of this one so I don't know if I'll finish this before Christmas but I am hoping to finish that. I would like to finish this this year but if not this will be finished definitely early in 2023. I'll say definitely but hopefully early in 2023 because the stopper is out of it. So that is one of my oldest ones being from 2016. As I said, because I went on my no buy in 2018, there's a definite stoppage of product after that kind of date. So there's a lot of like 2015, 16, 17 because they were my major problem years, eh, 2016 in particular. In terms of 2016, I've got this one and this one. So the Kiehl's Clearly Corrective and the Makeup Forever HD Concealer. Now this isn't hugely high coverage. Um, I've sort of put it, I think Kiehl's actually sell this or sold this, I think it's been discontinued as an eye cream. It's got an SPF of 30 in it, but it does have a bit of a pigment. It's just not super high coverage. I feel like if I was going to finish this, it would be in work. Like I wouldn't use this as my concealer for going out, but I am just very aware it's getting old. So I would like to definitely give this some attention next year, but I don't know if I'll specifically finish this one but I then do also have my Makeup Forever Ultra HD concealer which I bought in New York in 2016 and we went in February so this is like early 2016. I feel like this has been so nearly finished for ages and then it just more seems to come. Once I'm finished this which is again from 2016 this is the next one that I want to concentrate on. So once those two are knocked out that leaves me my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer which I bought in 2018, a MAC Studio Fix which I got last year 2021. NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer is the other super old one that's from 2016 but I have been working on the MAC one that, that I've just finished in my project pan. So the NARS one hasn't actually been open so I think it should still be good although it's it's pretty old. That would leave me in a fairly good position. If I've got seven, take the MAC one off because I've actually finished that this year. That leaves me with six. If I take this one off, hopefully this year, if not early next year, that would give me five. 
finish this one takes me down to four. Tarte shape tape would be like my liquid one, then I'd have the other MAC one and the NARS one is my two pot concealers and then this would be the fourth one. So this definitely, I, I would like to be finished this at some point next year but it's not, although it's under concealer it's not very high coverage so I feel like this would be a work one if I did finish it but in an ideal world if these three could go that would be perfect. Setting spray, if you watch my 13 by Halloween you know what I'm going to say. I've got two setting sprays, one of them was in my 13 by Halloween, I didn't quite finish it. That's my L'Oreal Infallible one and I would definitely like to finish that next year. I only want to have one setting spray at any one time, that's definitely on the, the short list for being finished next year. Face powders, I have got nine. One of them is the Murad Blotting Perfector which is sort of like a cushion product. It's not really a powder, but it does mattify the skin like a powder. That's why it's in there. And then I've got one other press powder, which is this one. It is an Urban Decay powder. The packaging broke, so I finished the Chanel powder that was in this compact, repressed the Urban Decay one into this, and now this has broken, not quite as badly. It's still attached, but it's a uh, hanging on by one hinge. So I would definitely like to finish this powder next year, but that leaves me in a position where I would have eight, one of which is the Murad thing, so actually seven powders, all of which are loose. Of the loose powders, which take a lot longer to finish for me, I'd quite like to finish this one from Becca. This is the Zero Powder. So it's only 1.5 grams of product, so I'm hoping that shouldn't be too unrealistic to try and finish that. And then I would also quite like to finish this from Makeup Forever. This was in my first ever project pan back in 2018 and there is not a lot of this left. So I would definitely like to get that knocked out next year as well. I feel though if if I finish this, which is my only kind of proper pressed powder, although I've got quite a lot of loose powders on the inventory in terms of numbers, I would let myself repurchase the pressed powder. So I would like to pan this, but I feel like this won't actually bring my numbers down if I pan this, because I will add in another pressed powder to touch up with while I'm out and about. But I definitely want to try and knock out some of the loose powders. On to cheap products. Under contour I've got one product, it's my Kevin Kwan Sculpting Powder. I don't use it very often but I'm perfectly happy having one for when I want that, absolutely fine. Under bronzers I've got five but four of them are from palettes. One is a standalone bronzer. I'm absolutely fine with that, I'm not swimming in bronzer. It's the one bronzer that I have that I reach for that I picked and I'm not bothered about desperately trying to pan it anytime soon. It doesn't bother me as a category. However, blush I am kind of swimming in. I've got 55 blushes, although I did just finish one so I will actually be, as long as I don't get any for Christmas or whatever, I will be entering next year with 54 blushes. However, I have been panning one or more blushes at any given time for the past few years. So I do feel I need to rotate my blushes, do like maybe a blush a week or something. I feel like there must be ones that are probably past their best that I could be decluttering. So I'm not going to try and pan any blushes next year. But I would like to get my colour products down to being 50 or under, I think is the next sort of goal to be at if they're over 50. Ideally, I'd like to essentially knock out five blushes next year, but it won't be through panning. It will be through decluttering. But having said that, I don't want to declutter for the sheer sake of it either. I only want to declutter if I really don't like something or if I do like it, but I much prefer something else or if it's gone off. I don't want to declutter just to hit a quota, but I would like to be 50 or under for all the colour products. Then for highlights, I have got 20 at the moment and I definitely want to pan this next year. YSL Touche Eclat, there's only 2.5mls of product in here so I could definitely knock this out. I want that one out. I am planning to put a highlight into my project pan but it's in a palette so it's under other on my inventory. No other plans other than the YSL Touche Eclat to actually knock out a highlight. Eye primers, I have four. It's not a product that I buy, it's not a product that I use up but I'm not consistently adding to it so we'll leave eye primers as they are, not too bothered about setting a goal there. Then when it comes to eyeshadows, so eye crayons I have 18, eyeshadow singles I have 67, small eyeshadow palettes which is eyeshadow palettes between two and five, I have 14 of them and in terms of the shadow quantity there there's 57 shadows across those 14 palettes. Then large eyeshadow palettes which is palettes that include six or more eyeshadows. I have got 43 palettes and the shadow count there is 515. You know what I'm going to say here, I need to be rotating those eyeshadows. 
there's definitely ones I could be decluttering and knocking out but I'm not going to know that if I put them all to the side to concentrate on an eyeshadow palette. I would love to do a pan that palette. I love my Gucci eyeshadow palettes and I spent a small fortune on them so I was actually at one point sort of entertaining the idea of possibly doing a pan that palette with one of them next year but I definitely need to be rotating and then 2024 possibly doing a pan that palette. I, I would definitely like to do one but the fact that I used that eyeshadow yesterday and it had broken and I didn't know that there's definitely other stuff in my eyeshadow collection, my extensive eyeshadow collection that could be decluttered so that is using it, reacquainting myself with it, decluttering where I can, that is the goal for next year with eyeshadows rather than panning. On to eyeliners, I have got 54. Now, I did quite a big eyeliner declutter earlier this year, so I don't know how many more of them could actually go, but I feel like I need to, again, spend the time rotating through, investigating through them all, and just seeing if there's any that could be decluttered, because I would like that, again, to be 50 or less. Brow products, I have got 16. I don't get excited by brow products, so I'm not too worried about that as a category. It has just gone up because I changed my, it's not even my hair colour change, I got the fringe, and I felt like I needed to change my eyebrow colour to bring it more in line with my hair colour because I feel like once the fringe came and it, the, the two were sitting side by side it was very obvious that my eyebrows were a bit cooler toned than my hair so I've, I have actually just added some products because of that but it was very much I added them because of that I wouldn't have bought them otherwise so I'm not really worried about brow products to be totally honest like I go through my brow pencils at the rate that I go through them I only repurchase something like that when I've run out of another version. I've definitely realised I much prefer pencils to like pomades or powders even though they last so much longer they're just they're a bit fiddlier to use and whatever but I'm not not desperate to declutter anything that I own. The pencils I'll use at the rate that I use them I won't repurchase them until I've used them. I'm not worried. It's fine. We're not setting a goal on brows. Mascara I have currently got 12. I would definitely like that to be down to single figures next year. I don't think I'm going to pick out any particular ones. My Hourglass Mini I have got open at the moment. That's what I'm using. And my Tarte one is open as well. That's quite smudgy on me but it's fine. I'm just using it while I'm at work during the week. It's all good. So those two will definitely be gone in terms of specific ones. The Tarte Lights Camera Lashes and the Hourglass Extreme Lash Mascara because they are currently open. So that leaves me 10 others and I'll just work through whatever ones I work through. There's none that I am desperate to get rid of. They've not been opened so although the oldest one is from 2000, I've got two from 2015 actually but they've never been opened so I'll probably open them first actually if I remember to think about it and be logical. They are the Cover Ghetto Super Sizer and the Kevin Kwan Volume Mascara. However, they are both full size and I feel like I pick up a mini just because I'm like, oh, I can knock this out quicker. I very rarely open a full size. I feel like I, I am constantly trying to use my minis, but I also feel like you get handed a mini mascara like every two minutes. Like, I feel like I get them as gifts with purchase. Like, I don't even know where they come from. I just, I feel like you, you look at a counter and the person's handing you a mini mascara. Like, because I don't even buy all that much. You know, I've been on my no buys or whatever, I've only really been buying replacements, but I feel like I am constantly being given mascaras. But, so I feel like I keep prioritising the minis, but yeah, that's maybe what I need to do next year actually, is pull out the Cover Girl and the Kevin Aquan one, because they are the two oldest, just in case they've dried up in the tubes or whatever. But yeah, other than that, I'm not, there's none that I'm desperate to use or desperate to avoid. It is what it is. So I would just definitely like to get it down to single figures that's the goal rather than specific product goal. Then lip balms and primers. So I currently have 12, but I actually, I have two lip balms that are in tubes that are cut open that I think will be finished this month. And one of my fresh stick balms, um, I've used it like right down so that it's flat and I'm having to like use a lip brush to get into it. So I'm kind of hoping the three of them, we can sort of count them as either being done by the start of next year or very early next year. So actually, it's more like nine. Again, I would like to get that down. I think five is a good number to want to be down to. Actually, in the very long run, I would maybe like to be down to three. So I really love the Clarins Instant Light Natural Lip Perfector in the shade number six. Absolutely love that. That's sort of a hybrid between like a treatment product and a lip gloss. Um, so I really, really like that. I definitely want to keep that in stock. I like the Dr. Lip Nipple Balm, which is like a clear, thick, gloopy sort of treatment one. And then I think it'd probably be useful to have a third 
one in stock that's sort of like a stick that's maybe a bit more matte that's a bit more like if you're on the go and you want to put it on then put your lipstick over the top or whatever so I feel like three is probably long term where I'd like to end up with that but if I could have five if I could knock it down to five for ending next year with I'd be happy with that. Lip liner I have got 64 right now again I'm not going to finish any lip liners if I find any to declutter fair enough but I'm not going to set any goals there. Lipstick, I've got 120, but I'm going to be honest, I am, I really like the lipsticks I have just now. So I feel like the only reason I'm decluttering any of them is if they have gone off. I have concentrated on three different lipsticks through my Project Pans this year, so I do feel like definitely next year I'm not going to set a goal on lipsticks, but I do want to rotate to check that they're all alright, because there are probably some that have gone off. So in an ideal world, I would love to be ending next year having brought that 120 down to be a double digits figure, but I also don't want to get rid of 20 plus lipsticks for the sheer sake of it. It would only be if they've gone off, so rotation, see where we end up. Liquid lipstick, I've got 20. I just did a liquid lipstick declutter, so there's none of them that I'm massively keen to get rid of. I'm not going to project pan a, lips, a liquid lipstick, it's just not interesting to watch. We are nearly at the end, which my throat is very, very glad of, so I'm really sorry if my voice sounds dreadful to you guys. My throat's just got really dry and scratchy in the last, like, 10 minutes. On to lip glosses, I've got 18 at the moment. I don't have any specific ones that I'm desperate to try and pan, but I would definitely like to pan a lip gloss next year. I feel like for me lip gloss is just not a category that I am that interested in. I'm not purchasing very much in that category and I've knocked out a few this year uh, through my project pans and whatever and I knocked out a few last year as well so I feel like lip gloss is a category that if I consistent, I know I'm never going to finish 18 before they all go bad, like obviously, but I feel like lip gloss is a category that if I keep consistently putting one into my project pan, then checking the other ones, making sure they've not gone bad, getting rid of ones as they do go bad, I feel like it's a category I could get myself down to only having one or two in because it's not something that I am very often particularly excited about, it's not something I'm buying and bringing in at a rate that's like far higher than I could use and move out like it is with lipstick. So I feel like I do definitely want to have a lip gloss in my project pan next year. I don't know particularly what one that would be. I think they're all much of a muchness age-wise. Definitely one of them just to keep that category moving through and dipping down because I feel like it's it's just a satisfying category to do that with because it, it will go down. It's Whereas I feel like lipstick I could pan one but I'd have bought three so I, I feel like I never really see the the downgrade on certain other categories whereas lip gloss I feel like has been quite consistently going down since I started panning so I definitely want to keep the momentum there and have a lip gloss in next year's project pan and then the last category is other now I have eight products and other and they're all a bit kind of miscellaneous I've got my freckle pen I've got a couple of glitters I've got a couple of face palettes now one of those face palettes within my other category is this one from Everglass which if you are a regular viewer of mine you will know over the past few years I have basically had a product from this palette in almost every project pan. I'm a bit torn about what I want to do next year with this. I definitely want to knock another product out and I feel like it's quite interesting the way that this has worked out is that I have got my favourite product in this palette left which is this blush here. So I had two blushes and I knocked out the other one because I liked this one and then I've got the bronzer. I'm just not a bronzer person as I said already. It's not a product that excites me. So this was I think the 2016 Christmas Hourglass collection and as I said powders go off you get longer with them but they do go off so I feel like there's part of me that wants to do the blush next year because if anything is going to just have to end up being decluttered because it's gone off within this palette I would want it to be the bronzer because I'm just not that excited about the bronzer I will only finish this bronzer if I put it in a project and force myself to use it but I'm not going to be heartbroken about it if I don't get the use of the bronzer. So from that point of view, part of me is thinking, do the blush because you want to use that while it's still good. But I have just said to you guys, I've got 55 blushes, I think we said. Like, I need to rotate through my blushes and try and get rid of some of them because I panned, finally panned this one this year, but this was also in last year's project pan, so it took me two years of working on this one to pan it. And alongside that, I've also been panning my Tarte Party Blush Mini for the last two years, 
which I have just finished as well. So I feel like I've definitely, because I've been doing those two, the rest of my blushes have been a little bit neglected and I probably need to spend some time with them, which puts me then into the position where, well, if I'm going to keep this palette in my project, it should be the bronzer. Basically, I would rather pan the blush. I'd rather get the use of the blush and leave the, the bronzer to last in case it does go off but I also need to use my other blushes. So I don't quite know, I haven't made my mind up, but I definitely do want to put another pan in this palette next year, whichever of these products that ends up being. And then the other product that I want to put in my project pan, and I'm only aiming to hit pan, I'm not aiming to finish it at anything, is the highlight from my Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. This was the mini one they released, I don't know if they did it this Christmas, but I got this not last Christmas, but the Christmas before. And then if you've watched my 2022 Project Pan finale, you'll know what I've already said in that. I asked for this for Christmas, then I put my Benefit highlight into my Project Pan that year. Basically didn't touch this for the year because I was using that Project Pan highlight. Then this year, I got the Chantecaille highlight for Christmas and because I knew I hadn't touched this for a year, I put that Chantikai one immediately into this year's project pan and have now just spent a year using that. And I'm really glad that I've spent a year using that because it, it meant I got really good use out of it when it was new and at its prime. And I'm really, really happy with that decision. But I feel like I really, really wanted this and still haven't really spent time with it. So this is definitely going to be the highlight that is in my 2023 project pan but I am only aiming to hit pan I'm not thinking that I'm going to get rid of this palette within a year or anything like that that is where I am in terms of where I am right now where I would like to be and a couple of products that I am very specifically thinking about panning for next year Fringe has an absolute life of its own so yeah thank you very much for watching this video I hope it's been interesting for you let me know what your panning goals for next year are what's your thought process is what would you do what would you do if you were me between the blush and the bronze like I feel like basically the bronze is a more sensible one to use so that I can rotate my other blushes but I'd probably rather use the blush what do you think I should do let me know thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one bye